Hello students, still in the spirit of Christmas, uh, Merry Christmas to you. We're getting closer and closer. I hope you're enjoying your holidays. So today we're going to be talking about ego defense mechanism. Mechanisms, you know, if you refer to our previous videos, our previous discussions, we had talked about the fact that the ego, which is one of the structures of the personality of an individual that was uh, defined by um, Sigmund Freud, is faced with the responsibility of resolving conflicts within the individual. Internal conflicts that usually arise most times from trying to mediate between the desires of the id, which is a crude part of the personality, and the super ego, which is an extremely moral part of the personality. So the ego is usually faced with resolving conflicts and anxiety, and he does so, or it does so, by employing certain defense mechanisms. So we are going to be discussing these defense mechanisms today. Now, even though the work on defense mechanisms was uh, commenced by Sigmund Freud, he only described five defense mechanisms. Uh, his daughter, Anna Freud, uh, furthered the work on defense mechanisms and defined many more defense mechanisms. Uh, for this video, I think we're going to do about five defense mechanisms, but you have to go research and, you know, uh, study about other defense mechanisms. Now, the first defense mechanism that was described by Sigmund Freud and that we are going to discuss today is repression. The first defense mechanism we're going to discuss today is repression. Now, repression simply involves forcing or pushing away uh, certain impulses, uh, certain wishes, that we do not want to come to the conscious, forcing them and pushing them away from the conscious to the unconscious, forcing certain impulses, certain wishes, certain memories, certain um, elements that we do not want to come to the conscious, that provoke anxiety, that make us uncomfortable, that threaten our personality, pushing them away from the conscious to the unconscious. If you remember our discussion regarding the unconscious, you know, that's what happens when we push away those uh, memories, those impulses, those wishes, you know, we usually expend a lot of psychological energy and it is not a very effective defense mechanism because these memories, these impulses keep trying to come up to the conscious level, you know, uh, uh, state of our consciousness and we keep trying to push them away. We expend energy and it is it results in mental health challenges. You know, for instance, when someone has suffered a severe trauma, you know, and after the trauma, when people have post-traumatic uh, disorders, there's always like a flashback of these memories. There are certain things in the environment that trigger these memories. So they keep trying to push away these memories because they cause anxiety, they cause tension within the personality. So this process of pushing away impulses, uh, wishes, memories that we do not want to come to the conscious that threaten our personality, threaten our peace, this uh, practice of pushing them to the unconscious is what is known as repression. Now, the second defense mechanism we are going to discuss is projection. Now, projection involves attributing thoughts, thoughts, feelings, and motives that are within ourselves, within the individual, to another person. So you attribute thoughts, feelings, and motives that are within your own personality to another person. For instance, and usually the, the thoughts, the feelings, and motives that are usually projected are feelings of aggression or feelings of sexual fantasies, those kind of feelings. You know, you attribute what is actually within yourself to another person. For instance, a gentle man or lady may be attracted, you know, or may experience sexual fantasies concerning another person. So a man is expressing sexual fantasies or is attracted to a lady. And instead of saying, I am attracted to this lady, he rather says, this lady is attracted to me. So he projects his feelings on the lady. So that's what projection is, attributing your feelings, attributing your uh, fantasies, you know, and certain impulses within your own personality to a third party. That's what projection is. Now, the next defense mechanism we are going to discuss is displacement. And this simply involves redirecting certain impulses, usually aggression, from the original target to a powerless target, to an alternative, 
alternative substitute target or uh, you know a, a, a powerless target for instance the individual knows that if he expresses his impulses the aggression towards the original target there is bound to be consequences so instead of expressing this aggression towards the original target you know towards which he feels the aggression he displaces the aggression he redirects the aggression to a substitute powerless target this is what we always call transfer of aggression, you know. So, for instance, a man goes to work and he has a bad time with his boss. In spite of all that he has done to impress his boss, the boss still yells at him. Now, he knows that if he yells back at the boss, he's likely to get a sack. So he doesn't yell back at the boss. He rather comes home. And as he opens his door and the wife says, Oh, darling, welcome. How was your day? He say, uh, How was my day? What do you mean by that? Or maybe the, the, he opens the door, the wife opens the door and says, uh, Good evening, uh, dear. And he says, What's good about the evening? And he begins to yell at the wife. You see, the house is untidy. See how you're looking. Now, it's not because the wife has done anything bad, but simply because he is carrying inside of him this aggression that he needs to release. So, and he couldn't displace this aggression. He couldn't direct this aggression to the boss who made him angry because of the likely consequences. So he transfers the aggression to an innocent, powerless target, his wife, because he knows his wife can do nothing to him. And that's really unfair. So we should try to manage our aggression and look for other outlets for our aggression. You know, you could point a pillow if you feel angry because the pillow is lifeless and probably you know, there's no harm that's going to be done punching your pillow uh, probably hitting your table, uh, you know, whatever you're going to do, but don't direct your aggression to another human because that human has feelings. And even though they cannot respond to you with an equal amount of aggression, you're going to hurt their feelings and you're psychologically abusing your substitute target. So that's what displacement is about. Now, there's a type of displacement that's very important. It's called sublimation. This one involves directing uh, all of the sexual and aggressive energies within the individual to a target that is socially acceptable. Now, this is a principle that we use with adolescents. You know, like we said, there's a whole lot of aggressive and sexual and energies raised above that in adolescents. And if it's not properly directed, it could be directed destructively. So during adolescence, uh, we should direct this sexual and aggressive energies into productive, productive pursuits such as artistic pursuits, such as developing skills, such as educational pursuits. So this is an educational implication. There's a lot of energy in adolescents, in our adolescents. So we can direct this positively. If we do not, it will be directed destructively. Yeah, so that's the third uh, defense mechanism. And the fourth defense mechanism we are going to discuss today is regression. Regression is usually referred to as a movement back in psychological time. What happens is that when an individual is faced with a situation that is a, that produces conflict within the individual, he regresses, he goes back to one of the psychosexual stages in which he was once fixated. Now, whilst discussing um, the psychosexual stages of development, I probably told you that at any stage that the individual becomes too comfortable, he becomes fixated at that stage. The individual remains at that stage and does not desire to move on to the next stage of a psychosexual development. That's why it is important to create a balance at any stage. Do not uh, allow the child to overenjoy the stage, to overindulge, you know, because if the individual, uh, the baby, the growing child, the growing individual overenjoys that stage, he gets fixated at that stage. Eventually, he could move on, but maybe not at the right time. Now, when the individual experiences conflicts within his personality, he goes back, he travels back in psychological time to that stage in which he was most comfortable and was fixated. He begins to express, you know, the behaviors of that stage. For instance, if an individual is faced with the loss of a loved one, you know, the individual begins to behave like a baby and begins to express some, you know, baby attributes, you know, dependency and all of that, because probably the individual was once fixated at that stage. So uh, re regression is going back in psychological time, going back to express some characteristics of an earlier stage of development in which the individual was once fixated. Now, most of these uh, defense mechanisms are not the right ones, but if you study, you find out which ones are uh, better, you know, for like sublimation, if uh, uh, sublimation is used, is a good defense mechanism. The fifth and final defense mechanism that we are going to be discussing today is identification. 
Now, this type of defense mechanism deals with the individual incorporating aspects of another person's personality into their own personality in an attempt to resolve a conflict or to solve a problem. So when faced with a problem, you look for someone who has the attributes that can help you solve the problem and you, you incorporate those attributes into your own personality. Now, in some cases, an extreme example is the Stockholm Syndrome whereby a hostage, in an attempt to solve his problem, incorporates the attributes of the hostage taker, you know, into his own personality to such an extent that the hostage might even help the person that took him hostage to achieve his goals. He can help him to take a second victim hostage because he incorporates the aspects, some aspects of the hostage's personality into his own personality. Now, identification can be used positively. For instance, when we encounter problems, if we incorporate aspects of the personality of an individual who possesses the right characteristics into our own personality in an attempt to solve the problem, then it's a positive way of, you know, using a, 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 defend, defend, a defense mechanism, positive defense mechanism. For instance, if you've been filling an exam and you perceive that as a problem, and in order for you to overcome that problem, there is someone in your class who is performing excellently. Now you look at that person's personality and you incorporate aspects of that person's personality that you think will help you excel in your exams into your own personality and then you begin to excel in your exams. So that's a positive defense mechanism. For instance, that person is very organized. That person has a timetable. That person always attends classes, does homework, reads a lot. So you incorporate all of these aspects of the person's uh, personality uh, into your own personality and use that to solve your problem. So by that means you've solved the problem, you've resolved the conflict within your personality. That's all for defense mechanisms today. Like I said, there are a whole lot of other defense mechanisms. Go research about them, read about them, uh, and then write about them as well. If you are yet to subscribe to the Psychologist NDTV, it's easy. Look beneath this video for the word subscribe. Just click on the word subscribe and you are subscribed. It is free of charge. Thank you for watching. Until I come your way again next time, it's bye from me to you.